You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and seven of you may on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Undefeated. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is up for as little as five dollars. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming not safe for work videos. All that for as little as five dollars. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up. Let's go. All right. Yup, or, or so I hear. You can start booking private sessions at that level, and apparently Jesse, apparently Jesse and Bucky never really got on too well. So it was a good thing all around, I guess. I guess so. Hard to imagine what kind of asshole you'd have to be to not get along with Bucky, but I've met Ryan, so... How has Redline been since, uh, the party? Ah. Keep Redline secrets. Hmm. He's doing alright, I think. It's kind of hard to tell, you know? But he got a few boxes of stuff from his family, so I think he'll be okay. Drayden nods. That's good to hear! He mentioned something about getting a game controller, or something like that? That sounds about right. Well, that's good. I was worried for a bit that they weren't going to be able to get him the last of his things. But still, keep an eye on him for me, would ya? They both look back to Bucky and Redline wrestling, little hyena laughing as he finally flips the big guy over. Heh, <laughs> sure. Have you heard anything about his friends? Hmm, I don't really talk to them. But he did get kind of a weird... But, uh, he did, he did kind of get weird when we saw them today, now that you mention it. He got all quiet, but he said it's because he hadn't had a fight in a while. I see. Right? It's not like Redline would stay quiet about his friends. He never shuts up about them. Even if he hasn't talked about them in a few weeks. Huh. Do you think something happened? Drayden sighs. Probably. Should we say something? I've tried asking. He keeps saying everything's fine. As frustrating as that can be sometimes, we can't really force him to open up. That's fair. He's right sucks, but forcing the questions can only make things worse. And how have you been? I still don't know if I should talk to him about how much Bruce and I have been talking. At the very least, we should talk about it in private. Not bad. My abs still hurt after the last fight. Well, if that's the worst you're feeling these days, that sounds like an improvement. Have you heard anything about you from your family? Actually, now that you mention it, no, I haven't. Not since I, not since we talked a month ago. I see. Have you put any thought into what, into what you'll, uh, into what you'll do if he calls again? He's awfully persistent. Do you think we could maybe talk about this in private? Oh, of course. Oh, just let me know when you'd like to talk it over. You have my number. Of course, Doctor. As Bucky finally pins Redline, the kangaroo cranks him back in a chokehold. After a few choke laughs, the little hyena taps out, and the two collapse forward on the mat, exhausted. They both have big smiles on their faces. They seem happy. Bucky scoops Redline up, dra draping the limp yeen over his shoulder, and trots back over to us. Hey, I I'm... I'm not done. Oh, <laughs> yes you are, pup. You got a fight coming up, and we get to, and we got practice later. So that means you got to rest. The kangaroo stops in front of us, then flips Redline over, holding him, holding him bridle style. He turns to look at me and Drayden, tongue hanging limp out of his maw, panting like a dog. Here, you want him? Bucky starts to hand him over, and I awkwardly accept Redline into my arms, and immediately have to ease him toward the ground. He's heavier than I was expecting. He catches himself on his feet, then drops down, laying spread eagle and panting some more between giggles. That'll wear him out for a bit. You had, a, you had fun fighting above your weight class, pup? <laughs> yeah. How come you never train? How come you never trained me like that? Huh, that's because. Huh, maybe we should start then. Never took you as a glutton for punishment, too, Zandia. In a flash, he pulls me into a headlock, grinding his knuckles hard against my head. I try swinging my fists for his sides and pulling free, but with no luck. It's too warm, pressed against his sweaty body, bare knuckles digging harder and harder into my scalp. I have to tap out. Heh, there you go, little man. He lets me go, and I stumble back against the counter. Redline lets out a little laugh and goes back to gasping. Just a little taste of what's to come. Now that you and Red got me fired up, I'll make sure to I'll make sure to get you some special training with your coach. Now, if you'll excuse me, I was about to go on a walk with my dear friend Drayden. The doctor blushes a bit, and Bucky leans down to help Redline to his feet. Thinking y'all, water time. Your boy's gonna be alright for class later today? Yeah. I'll be gunning for you, Coach Buck, and that's double your punishment in class. He lets out a laugh while Redline tries to get a weary protest out. Bucky and Drayden make their way to the exit. Let's chat some more soon, you two. 
I nod at Drayden, but Redline just collapses again, panting face up on the ground. I sit down next to him, listening to him giggle for a while. He's never tried putting me in a headlock like that before. He's really scary when he gets riled up, but in a fun way. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. I think Drayden noticed too. How's your back feeling? I'm fine. I'm great. <laughs> the, the slams were nothing. It really did not sound like nothing. Did you learn your Did you learn your lesson? Oh yeah, coach gave me plenty to work with. I haven't wrestled like that in a while. You and I grappled like five days ago. No, I mean like with someone bigger. And Bucky's way bigger than Jesse. That loser's gonna eat pavement. He rolls out. He rolls onto his front and pushes himself to a standing position. I'm gonna go run and grab some water. Maybe a shower too. Bucky stinks. There's definitely more your scent, man. Red Lion takes a whiff and realizes his mistake. Shush! <laughs> I'll grab a shower. Red starts out the door, and at the same time, I feel my phone vibrate in my pocket. With a heavy grunt forced by the pain in my abs, I get myself up off the ground and check it. It's a text message from Dad. Ah, hey! The text can wait. Oh, Jesus. That is a big dude. That is definitely a big dude. The text can wait. I charge out into the hall to see Red Lion pressed up against the wall by someone. Come on, pup. It's an easy question. Some sort of canine about Bruce's size. As Redline pinned, shoved into the wall next to the gym. He's got a bit of a sleazy grin on his muzzle. Redline looks uncomfortable. Stop, Cole, I already said... At that, Cole smacks the side of Redline's muzzle, forcing a yelp from the yeen. I told you to call me Alpha, pup. Hey! I managed to catch their attention. They both turned their heads to look at me. You mind? You mind, runt? Leave him alone. It's okay, Xander. Hey, I think I recognize you. He shoves Redline away and staggers up to me, bumping me against his gut. I stand my ground, staring straight up at him. I don't care. Fuck off. You're that little creep that spilled your drink all over me. I remember the incident, but not the faces. I was panicking too much. It all happened so fast. It was back on my first day. I was talking to Redline and bumped into someone, hard enough to accidentally crush my smoothie cup. The lid popped off, spilling the drink onto the big guy. He shoved me back, and I slipped on the bit of a smoothie that fell to the floor. Red tried to keep me held up, but I just dropped. There were four guys. One was Bruce, and that guy that I bumped into was... Right. I was so scared when I saw Bruce, I totally forgot what the other guy looked like. Hey, what the fuck? You got a problem, shithead? The canine with the stain barks back at Redline. Wait, I remember his voice now. It was just a little bit prior, but my first time entering the cafeteria... I was walking through the aisles of tables. I got distracted by the food stations along the back, and I... Oh shit, my bad, little dude. <laughs> this was the guy that hit me by accident, or maybe he just didn't care. They all laughed at something. Probably the fact that he just got decked by that just got decked by this big guy. I turned around to walk away, but you lost or something, little guy. That's right. I don't think I ever got an apology for that smoothie incident, little man. He leers down over me. I can feel his weight pressing into me. I don't know what's gotten into me, but I'm not as scared as I should be. And I don't think Redline ever got his. Cole glares down, a slight growl rumbling from his throat, but he smiles and reaches back for Redline. Cole glares down, a slight growl... Okay. In a single swipe, he's got him in a headlock, grinning a, grinding a noogie hard into his scalp. Hey! We were just having some fun, ain't that right, little slut? Stop! Ow! Ow! I just want to know where my buddy Bruce is at. Said he was going to meet me around here. Figured the fang fuckhole would know where the ch would know where the champ is. Second, y'all. There, it's water time. Redline just growls and struggles harder and harder, not even opting to respond. I have to do something. Heal, idiot. Bruce strolls out of the weight room next to the gym, scruffing Cole harshly. He releases Redline immediately, who stumbles forward into me. The canine turns around to face Bruce. Jesus, dude, you're late. I've been waiting for you to spot me for waiting for you to spot me for an hour. And you're a dumbass. I said we're meeting at 1.30. No, you said we were meeting at 12.30. I said 1.30. One th you forget how to tell time? The two keep arguing for a bit, the commotion getting louder and louder as it draws the attention of random passers by in the hall. Eventually Bruce grumbles and stomps back into the weight room. I'm gonna go work out. You better quit picking on the lightweights. Huh. Cole scruffs Redline again, or at least he manages to grip it. I step between them, keeping Cole from moving him. Or what? You're gonna hurt me? Bruce sighs and steps closer to Cole, staring him down. Drop him. Cole hesitates and lets Redline go. You've been doing this shit for months, Cole. 
You spend all your time fucking around and lost your la and you lost your, your you lost your last five fights. Quit being a fucking idiot and get to work. The two stay pressed chest to chest, growling until, <sighs> whatever. Cole finally releases his grip, shoulder checking Bruce as he stomps toward the weight room. Bruce sighs and follows behind him. I swear I catch his eyes looking to both of us before he enters. What a creep. You okay? I think so. You know him? Redline lets out a long sigh and shakes the tension out, starting down the hallway. I, uh, I know a lot of people down here. I'm guessing you heard the, uh, fuck hole? Yeah. His ears are folded down, talking under his breath while we walk. I get up really close with a lot of guys down here. My mind goes back to Redline detailing his encounters while we were at the beach. Yeah, you've, uh, you've mentioned it. Well, Cole was different. Most of the time, the guys would just come over. I'd help them out, and that's that. Cole was really mean about it. He's rough, not in a fun way. And ever since then, he just kept making fun of me for it. I mean, I get hazing, but when he does it... Redline shudders as we reach the second floor. It's nice to be wanted like that, but I don't know. It just makes me feel, like, gross. Hopefully Bruce can keep him on a leash. I can't always be around to protect you. He goes quiet for a second, looking away. Sorry. I wasn't trying to make him feel bad. Shit. Don't apologize to me. It's his fault. Right. By the time we make it to the room, Redline's st Redline stone, Redline stone silent. He gathers up some clothes quick and leaves to shower. He seems so proud of, of his escapades and who's bragging at the beach, but I feel like he's still not being fully truthful. It's nice to be wanted like that. Like, like an object? I is he proud of that? People are free to do what they love, but it doesn't feel like there's any love there. Maybe it was an obligation for him. He probably feels pretty lonely. His parents hate him. His only friends stopped talking to him. He just got shoved around by some asshole. I think back to the time he embarrassed me in class. I felt fucking sick, and the last thing I needed was to be isolated from everyone else down here. All I wanted to do was run to the showers and cry. Cry. My body moves on its own, shifting out of our room and stomping down the hall towards the showers. I'm there before I can even think. There's only one shower going. I move closer, leaning up against the wall next to it, staying quiet and trying to listen. It's hard to tell. I guess that's why people cry in showers. Red? Ah! His face appears from around the side of the shower. Oh, hey man, what's up? He doesn't look like he's been crying, though it's hard to tell. His whole face and body is soaked. Are you okay? Red pauses for a second, then smiles. There you go. Hello, Thumbnail. Yeah, man. Why are you worried? I'm gonna slip and fall? I'll take a lot more. It'll take more, a lot more than that to hurt me. Though, that is a real fear of mine. It's not really why I'm here. Just making sure you're okay. It looks like some of Bucky Slam's hurt. Oh, pshh. That guy's got nothing on me. Right. Well, if you're alright, I'll head out. You sure you don't want to hop in? The water's nice and frigid. I roll my eyes and start to leave. I'll pass. Catch you later, Red. I'm sure he's fine. At least as fine as you can be after getting shoved by some meathead in the hallway. Cole, why would Bruce ever be friends with a guy like that? I guess it would make sense if they were both as dumb as I thought. But Bruce is smarter than that. At least he seems smarter than that. Maybe it's hard to make friends down here. People say that it gets lonely at the top, and I guess that probably had some truth in it. Especially if the selection down here is bone dry. I pull out my phone and check the time. Ah, right, the text from Dad. Thanks for at least an improvement. Now I can see now I can see what he has to say without the pressure of talking back right away. Hey bud, call me. Dad. Well, there goes the option of not talking back right away. What the hell does he even want to talk about? I should just delete the text and block him. For some reason my body gets a little numb whenever I think about that. Tingly in places all over for a second, then it just disappears. I got caught doing something I'm not supposed to. Probably something to talk with Drayden about. I swipe the text away and try to put Push it out of my mind. What's been going on the last, God, what, 12 hours? Bruce tried to get me to leave, and now he's trying to be friends with me. Redline got a fight, and he needs to train. Redline needs to train. I need to focus on that. Anything to get the rest of the shit off my mind. I guess I've been here for a while, as Redline walks in with a fresh change of gym clothes. Oh, you're still here. Yep. He smells like a wet dog. The room stinks of it when he comes back after a shower. I was gonna try out my fight my fight stick for a bit before practice. I don't really have anything better to do, so I sit and watch Redline tap away on his buttons. It's like riding a bike. The other controller is nice, but this one's more comfortable, you know? He turns to look at me excitedly. I actually used to, uh... 
His ears lower and he looks back to his laptop. Anyway, I'll, I'll shut up now. Did he just get embarrassed? I didn't know shame was something he could feel. You're fine. Talk away. Redline shakes his head, booting up that fighting game from before. Nah, I'll just, I'll just talk your ear off. I let out a sigh and sit on the foot of his bed to get a better view of the screen. If I'm being honest, it's weirder, it's weirder when you're not talking. All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out that Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye.